Chances are you've searched around on YouTube for the perfect email template. That one template that's gonna help make it rain for your business. You know, like a cash cow email template. Well, I did some hunting on a YouTube search on this topic and I noticed in heaps of videos, they mentioned the same ideas for your email templates. Things like use a curious story, make the email pack full of secrets and the secret is answered on the link. Or there's just your generic, hey, you should run a promotional campaign, use scarcity, use urgency, use a great offer. But seriously, like, we've all seen this, what are some other templates that actually work to bring in more sales into your business? Well, there's one thing we can all agree on that brings in more revenue. It's returning customers, right? So what's the secret for having customers come back to you? Well, it's pulling people into your world, building a strong relationship with them, and ultimately being very strategic with your communication. That's why I'm super pumped to present to you a masterclass in persuasive writing, relationship building, and strategic selling style emails. This is actually gonna blow every other video you've seen on YouTube about email marketing templates. If you're a business owner with an email list and you're looking to inject some serious cash into your bottom line, you definitely wanna stick around until the end of this video. G'day, I'm Jules Dan, and I'm a freelance copywriter and email list manager with over $10 million in client results. And on this channel, we talk about how to get more customers, how to make more per customer, and how to keep them coming back with the power of the pen. And today we're talking about none other than email marketing and really good communication. Now, I've kind of set the stage really big here, like set some massive expectations. And before we dive into today's video, today's video is sponsored by me. So I've created a companion email challenge to go alongside this video so all the ideas stick nicely. And I've called it the Email Lifers Challenge. And if you're wondering what I mean by lifers, I mean like they'll stick around with you for life. Basically, it's where I send you an email every day for the next 20 ish days and it's perfect for you if you've got no idea what to say to take a subscriber to a buyer. So if you've got a product, a high ticket coaching program, perfect right up your alley. It's going to show you not just how to write content to sell people into your products and services, but how to sell them on your ideas, your philosophy, the foundation of how you create email list lifers. And you want to set yourself up for months of content ahead so you don't have to deal with writer's block because let's face it, writer's block is an absolute bitch. Basically, you want to be swapped with ideas so you will never go idea hungry again. This will be a paid product in the future, but for now, this is something I'll be giving away for free. So if you're looking to get free access to the Email Lifers Challenge, check out the link in the description below. Okay, so this is gonna be a longer style video with some real examples, going to my computer, that's a good thing, so bring a notepad, buckle up, let's go. Oh, and promise me one thing, if you find some value along the way, make sure you give this video the thumbs up, way better than a subscription or anything else. I know if you're liking this, if you just give me the thumbs up. All right, so let's jump into the five cash cow email marketing templates. Finally, so the first email marketing template are called retention style emails. Put simply, these are your pure relationship building emails. They got nothing to do with selling. And I'll explain why that's super powerful in just a second. But a retention style email pretty much is a glimpse into your personal life. A good rule of thumb is to find something that people can relate with so that you are a very relatable and likable person. So some ideas are friends, family, dating, pets, fodder for those types of emails. They're very relatable, easy going, and I'm sure you can come up with heaps of different ideas from those topics. I'll show you a real example what a retention email is, but why are we doing this? Well, what we're doing is what we're continually depositing into our list's emotional bank account. That way, when you want to go withdraw, take some money out, you're going to get overdrawn. You've given enough goodwill, they don't know you, like you, trust you, so you can go do that. And the reason why we're doing these retention style emails, including your hobbies, family, what's going in your life, is because people want to be like you. They want to feel related to in their daily lives as well. Now, there's a huge difference between treating your email list like an open diary where you're gushing all your problems and stuff versus trying to be entertaining and reveal parts of your life. So it's up to you how much you wanna reveal in these emails. Personally, what I've done and what I do with my clients is, here's what I'm gonna reveal and how it's strategic to our end objective, which is to make a likable character, get more sales, and then make a list of stuff we don't wanna reveal, stuff that would absolutely trigger people, piss people off, have massive spam complaints, that sort of thing. Maybe don't reveal that you're, you're a Satan worshiper or that you wet the bed or something that's just not gonna really help your end objective. So big build up, what does a retention email look like? How would you write one of these? I wanna dive into my computer, show you a real example of my clients, retention style emails, showcase his personalities, plant some seeds of what it's like to work with this guy and a whole bunch of other really cool covert persuasive techniques you can use inside your emails for your next email marketing template. Hey, so let's get into the retention stories. Pretty cool, right? Actually got no idea what it is. All right, so what, what is a retention story? 
shockingly, it is actually, we're not trying to create a sale. What we're doing here is building a relationship by infusing your personality, what you like, and some aspirational type qualities that we want people to to think, behave, but to feel so that they can then become really good customers. I know it sounds like a bit of a mouthful. So let me sort of break it down what I've done for a client right here. Okay, so his company is called Agency Mavericks. So the title Mavericks is just like perfect mess, 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 ugh, message market match. Um, now, um, I'm going to read through, let, let's just read through this email. I, I can deconstruct as it's going on because this, this whole video is supposed to be very in-depth so you can see exactly what I mean by each thing. I'm not glossing over anything. Um, cool, let's get into it. Have you seen the new Mavericks movie? Lately, I found myself on a bit of a luxury streak. A few emails ago, I spoke about going to a fine dining restaurant, which by the way, if you haven't already read and are still banning prospects on price, please go back and read that. Maybe you can see what I'm doing there onwards. Not long ago, I found myself at a gold class watching uh, at a gold class movie. <laughs> that's pretty, watching the new Top Gun movie with Amy. That's his wife, by the way. Um, I had to, you know, it's about Mavericks. Like I said, uh, it's very congruent. So actually, I spoiled myself with a chocolate brownie and a glass of red wine. So um, already, I've already um, inf infused, like, who's his wife? Um, he spoiled himself with some chocolate and some uh, red wine. Like, this isn't a regular thing. It's a special thing. And then um, at the end, it's uh, like his his wife contradicted him and said that was the worst movie I've ever seen. And he um, kind of was just like, well, there's actually a powerful lesson in this. And and the premise here then, we, we take like the real life story and then we say that Mavericks don't play by the rules because the rules, they protect people and Mavericks don't need protecting, but they do shoulder a lot of responsibility while breaking rules. Let me give you an example of the movie without any spoilers, talks about the movie character, blah, 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 blah. Um, and then he's just like, "It's uh, don't be afraid to break the rules every now and then if it aligns with your long-term vision. It's easy to get stuck with day-to-day -day issues. Maybe you know there's something missing from your client brief and you go ahead and execute something differently because you know it leads to better results. Otherwise, you'll need to have the awareness to check yourself if it backfires. Obviously, you'll need to have your awareness. However, that's just one area of business I encourage my Mavericks Club members to think about. Zig when others zag. So here, it's I'm infusing the personality. I'm infusing um, what it means to be, everyone knows who's reading this email, what a Maverick is. Like they're paying 25K to be part of his program. Um, and yeah, so I, I, we're, we're basically saying like, this is the philosophy you should be following um, and at the end, it's like, what movie have you seen recently? Hit reply and let me know. So this is just a purely relationship building, getting people to stick around, um, no sale at all. I'm just literally asking, what movie have you, have you seen recently? While subtly embedding little bits of philosophy throughout it. So that is a retention style email. Hopefully I've given you some ideas of what that might be. But the main thing is that assume they're a customer, assume they're a best friend, and you want to be building a relationship with the person and the list by asking them preferably a question that has nothing to do with business. Number two of the cash cow email marketing template is ascension style emails. We're basically showing people the ladder, unclipping the red velvet rope and giving them the sneak peek of what's behind the scenes. So what this isn't, it's not a testimonial, it's not bragging about your program. An ascension style story or email has multiple objectives, so Let's go through some of that. One cool theme that's really cool to exploit, uh, I mean, go into, is to make people feel like they want to be part of the cool kids club. And if you think this sounds like high school and we're past this, look, I understand, I totally get it, but, but this sort of psychology is used all the time when it comes to high ticket ascending people into these high level things. Especially when there's status involved and how buying your thing instantly gives them status. Done right, an Ascension style email template is really damn good. Now, I'll give you an example from my home city. It has nothing to do with email, but I'll paint the picture for you a little bit. So in my city of Melbourne, we got something called the Melbourne Cup. It's this horse race. Uh, we have this day off for people to get drunk and to gamble, basically. How virtuous, right? And inside the horse arena is something called the birdcage. You can't buy a ticket, you have to get invited, and it's where all the celebs, all the in people, everyone who's famous goes to this area. You have to be invited only. People post best on Instagram, it's on the news, 
is building so much desire to want to join, to be part of this group at the Birdcage. Now, in the context of business, you might not be at this level yet, but you can still create this virtual environment where you can pull back the red velvet rope and show them the Birdcage. So you can do this with showing them your private masterminds or retreats to exotic locations. Like, look what I've done here in this email where before someone gets on a clarity call with one of my clients, I'm basically showing them all the cool events that they could be going to if they wanted to sign up. It's basically an Ascension email before someone gets onto a sales call. Pretty cool, right? It's a little outside the scope of this video. I just want to get you a little bit excited for what's to come. But you can get very creative when it comes to showing people the ladder and using Ascension stories. So we talked about status and we talked about showing them red velvet rope. There's another kind of Ascension style template you might want to use as well, and that's lifestyle. So this is where you paint a really pleasant scenario of where some of your existing customers are, but where the rest of your customers are trying to aspire to. We're not here to hard sell into any program. It's just a very soft sell at the end, but main part is that we're planting seeds of what it's like to be at that top level. So let's dive into my computer again. I'm gonna break down this email line by line so you can see exactly what I mean. And by the way, if you feel like this video has gone way beyond the scope of use urgency and scarcity inside your emails, give this video the thumbs up. It's gonna help me get this video out to a lot more people just like you. Let's get into this next part. It's called Ascension style emails. Now, Ascension is an interesting category because it's easy to feel like, oh, I need to show them really cool case studies um, to feel like I can prove myself that that this high-end deal actually works. But that's not the point of this. whole point of Ascension, uh, and I, wrote, I spoke about this in the previous example, is that imagine that you're giving people a glimpse behind the red velvet rope of what it's like to be part of the Cool Kids Club. And I mentioned that status is a very powerful emotional trigger that you can pull on to help build a relationship, help get people interested to book in calls, sales, that sort of thing. In this example here, in email five, what I've done here for Troy, um, I'm doing a bit of a lifestyle ascension style email. So um, this is where I want people to imagine like, oh, okay, so is this, this is where I can, this is where I'm going and a few of his member, a few of Troy's Maverick Club members have done this, but a lot of them haven't. So, ideally, I want to be first planting seeds. This is what how our Mavericks think. This is what you need how to be behaving. Just continually conditioning them to think about that without being like join the group, join the group, because no one wants that. But if you tell inside of a story and covertly say these things, it's a bit different. Now, let's go through this email quickly. I'll explain what I'm doing. So you can use Ascension style style emails as well. And these aren't an overnight thing. You might not have any ideas to begin with. So hopefully something that might inspire you, like I said, what habit separates blank from the rest? And I've just said our top mavericks. So yeah, this is quintessential Ascension style emails, like the habits that you need to ascend to be the cool kids basically. Um, good idea and execution equals money and making opportunity. Trouble is coming up with good ideas is difficult when you're stressed and overwhelmed with our daily lives, putting out fires in the agency, looking after the kids, managing a team. It's not easy to juggle, let alone come up with brilliant ideas. The kind of ideas that propel your agency forward. So why don't great business building ideas just download into our heads at will? Well, after doing some research, the creative process, I found that missing piece of the puzzle and it's probably not what you think. It's a habit called incubation. Put simply, you remove yourself from the problem and not think about it. For me, so I'm using some personality here. For me, it might be mucking up, uh, mucking around in the recording studio, doing some voiceovers while playing with the EQ microphone settings, one of my many hobbies. So letting into the personal life. For one of our top Mavericks club, Adam Silverman, it's getting on his tractor. Yes, a real farm tractor. So sometimes Adam rings me and asks, Troy, I don't know what to do. I've got some free time. Um, I can't hold back and smile when I hear this because I keep telling I keep telling him the same advice. Go incubate, get on your tractor. Not go do more stuff just to be busy for the sake of being busy. So right here is uh, like ascending the lifestyle. Like we're at this point where, oh, right, where we're at this crescendo of what it means to be a real agency owner. Um, now what do I do? Because they're stuck in their own ways of thinking. So that's why I said, not go do more stuff to be busy for the sake of being busy. Let's get to the next point. Now, sure, Adam has put in the work to build his team to get to this point. It wasn't overnight, but the reason he's one of the most successful Mavericks is because he understands the power of incubation. 
He knows the process for coming up with great money-making ideas for his agency. That's my advice to you if your agency isn't at where you'd like it to be. So this is the uh, the takeaway. So it's not really an overnight process. So yeah, you, you need some help doing this basically. Um, he understands the power of incubation. So that's the habit. That's the payoff inside the email. He knows the process for coming up great money is uh, marketing ideas. Uh, that's my advice for you if your agency isn't where you're at. You're at. So um, that's the takeaway piece of content. P.S. The other not so secret reason why Adam is one of our top Mavericks is that he understands sales very well. He's able to generate and close appointments like clockwork. And we've shown this to people like blah, 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 blah. So if you'd like to learn a little bit more on how we can help you with that, click the link here for more info. Like super soft sell, um, bit of a bit of a transition here from the other reason why, you know, the other habit, he's actually really good at sales, which is most people's problems in this market. So that is a, a good example of what an Ascension style email is. Again, just to recap, um, if you could do a, a perfect template for you would be what habit separates our top and then your you know, mastermind program, high ticket program from the rest and then talk about how they behave and do habits differently. Here's a third cash cow email marketing template. It's showing your authority, or in some cases, you're sharing authority with someone else, which is my forte and I love doing this. So, have you been on a podcast? Have you made a social media post that's had really good impact? Or have you sent out an email that sparked lots of different replies from people? So the purpose of your authority content is to make it look like to your email list that you're in a person who's at the top of the mountain you're an authority basically. Now, I know this is where people can get kind of squeamish. It's it's all those bad things. It's vanity, it's narcissism. I, I totally understand. But here's the reality. The most highly paid business owners, the most highly paid experts, coaches, they're not necessarily the best. They just know how to market themselves the best. And this is one really good avenue to do it. It's with authority content. And on a side note, that's why I absolutely love having my own podcast as someone who's pretty much a nobody. I get to interview people who've already had an established authority bring them onto my show and share their name. Now, take it from someone who doesn't really use social media much. I really don't like narcissism and vanity. It's just shit game to play. But there's actually a great saying, anything that comes before but is complete bullshit. Playing the game of association is a massive opportunity to tap into, especially if you're in the growth phase like me. And by growth phase, I mean, as of recording this, I have 33 subscribers and 75 people on my, on my list. So I'm super famous, you know. Anyway, the point of this email marketing template is if you have an opportunity to flaunt some PR, you've been on a podcast, you've had someone else on your podcast, you've had someone of influence around you, never miss an email opportunity like this to spread your authority. Number four, we're going to go into the social proof case study. So I've left this towards the end because it sounds pretty obvious. You know, show some proof and people are going to believe that you can do what you do. Now, personally, when people say you social proof or case study, I think that they've just absolutely stuffed this up completely. What you're going to see is someone talk about, here's a problem, here's a solution, and here's the results of that. And if they're really good, they'll put in some photo from a Facebook group, which looks like this long, and it's incredibly difficult to read what's actually going on. Only a very small percentage of people are actually going to read this. It's not intriguing at all. There's no human interest story in this. Just so many bad things. Don't follow this style. The good news is I'm going to show you a really good style that combines a bit of content, a bit of human interest story, and some really good proof. The point is everyone is stuck in this zombie trance, and it's your job to pull them out of that zombie trance. So writing the right hook at the beginning is so crucial, and I'll show you that in just a second too. So things like using pattern interrupts at the start, using GIFs or moving images at the start of your email to grab attention. I absolutely love opening an email with a massive cliffhanger promising a big payoff so that the reader is forced to find out what's gonna happen next inside of it. So what's gonna make these emails pop is if you can tap into some really emotionally charged topics. I found the best way to do this is just to go and talk to your customers. You can go to Facebook groups, you can go to Reddit, that's all great, but nothing is gonna get you to the core of all the insecurities, all their fears, you get on the phone for 30 minutes, build some rapport, and just ask them, you know, why were you feeling that way? About 10 times, you're gonna to get to the absolute bottom of you know your entire market psychology. Thankfully, with the example I'm gonna show you, this email got about five booked calls. It uses an emotionally charged story, plus 
a bit of content to get the audience intrigued, clicking on it and then booking calls inside your calendar. And also pay attention to the theme that I've done with this story. It doesn't always have to be like a rags to riches or a place of angst. I've actually just gone from a place of greed, making lots of money really quickly. You might think it's a cringy thing, but you just it's one of those topics you just have to test. If this all sounds like a lot and you're wondering how do you put this into practice inside your email list, inside your business, Make sure you check in the link in the description for the email list lifers challenge. It's where I give you an email every single day for the next 20-ish days. We're gonna come up with a brilliant content plan. You're gonna have a clear email marketing plan for the months ahead. All right, so let's jump into this example of how you would do a real good social proof email. All right, so let's get to the case study email. The case study email, one of my favorite to write because people do this so badly where they just say, here's the problem. Here's a solution, here's a result. And it doesn't really get you sucked into the story of who the person is, what the problem is going through, shared experiences with the audience. Um, and in this example here, what I've done is that I've led with an open loop right at the start. I love doing this. Um, I had to pull Joy back to, down to reality. I didn't think she'd find recruiting easy with no prior experience. Little did I know, Joy would prove me wrong in the most delightful way possible. It was awesome. And by the way, um, this email alone booked in like four or five book calls. So um, yeah, thanks a lot, John, for letting me share this with, uh, with my YouTube crowd. But anyways, enough self-promotion. Um, let me explain why I've sort of done this. Now, there's multiple angles you can go. You can go like high drama, high angst, pull them in, you know, just like a soap opera, or you can foreshadow that um, someone with no experience actually got a surprising result like I've done here. So let's go through this email and I'll explain what I'm doing throughout it because I've kind of done a hybrid here of like a how to content and case study email, but it works super well. As you can see, the, the subject line is quintessential how Joy actually made 26 hours in placement in just two months without prior recruiting experience, like the most quintessential case study subject line you can think of. Okay, so we've done the hook at the start. Um, it's kind of contradictory, like they would prove me wrong in the most delightful way possible. Okay, what, what are they gonna say next? Um, before anyone can join Recruit Accelerator, my team and I have a quick chat about the person's experience level. 80% of them have recruiting experience, 20% have absolutely no experience. They just love working with people. Now, I need to keep it real with the newbies. There's a massive upside to starting your own recruiting business, but there's work involved, no way around it. And that's what I told Joy. She had zero recruiting experience. So this passage here, um, we've hooked them with the story and this is the case study. Now, the whole point, the whole strategic objective of this case study email is to make people feel like, well, I don't have any experience in this house. It's going to work for me. Um, and, you know, we could have gone down the route of, oh, you know, she was down on her luck. She, it was a rags to riches story. Was, I don't know, something like that. But that wasn't the case here. So what we're doing is that I'm focusing on greed. Um, that's the emotion, dominant emotion I'm focusing on, greed. And I'll show you in just a second. Um, but this little passage here is highlighting how, um, yeah, you don't have to have the experience, but we're being real with you. Like there is work. And I think that sometimes people, they kind of skip over. Um Sometimes you do need to let them know there is work to push away the bad folks. Um, anyway, she, she entered a niche with no prior experience, a niche within a niche. So why did you do that? Well, Joy uh, followed what a market was growing, expanding. Better still, she followed a market there where there's a starving crowd for top talent and happy to pay a premium. Within two months, um, she blew me away. Uh, she found a client within three weeks and made a $26,000 placement. Okay, so there's like a tiny bit of content here. Um, and then this is the payoff where, where I said she would blow me away in the most delightful way possible. I haven't really hidden it. Here's the payoff. Here's the proof. Um, now we want to address an objection. Okay, so as you can see, the story hasn't gone for that long. It's, it's just like trying to, I've just led them with a hook of they've tried to prove me wrong. And you can go down that angle here. Um, now addressing the objection. Okay. This probably doesn't, I wasn't born yesterday. How, how can you double income in 60 days? Um, that's why if you're skeptical about joining, 
hear it from me. Instead of hearing it from me, you can skip to this part of the interview with her and hear it from her where I chat about her experience. No recruiting experience to a first $26,000 a month with a recruiting business in less than 60 days. And this video itself is an interview with the client talking to his student, um, talking about their journey and their story. So um, that's the angle I took for this case study email. So you can definitely follow this. It's worked super well for this client here. I think we've got four or five book calls just from this broadcast email alone. Um, definitely want to test this angle out. So just to recap again, you want to hook them in with some sort of contradictory uh, foreshadowing. Like little did I know that would pre me wrong in the most delightful way possible. Like you can use that line uh, inside of your emails too. Um, then you want to be real with say who sort of joins the program, set some expectations, give them a mini payoff, just like we led at the start, show some solid proof. This is like a legit a LinkedIn recommendation. So it looks legit. Highlight the proof so it's not an eyesore and you can actually see where the money is. Um, restate the objection, show some empathy, and then transition into your interview and let them know exactly where it is on a timestamp. So just an example, um, you can have a lot of fun with this email template right here. Okay, I've left the most powerful template until the end. This is the kind of template you wanna use when you're launching because it's gonna to lead to a lot of sales. That's the false beliefs email marketing template. Here, we're unpacking the problems, insecurities, and fears your clients have, and then taking them to the promised land. So let me explain what I mean by false beliefs. So this could be stories, things that they believe that are actually holding them back from getting to the desired end result that they want. Now, this isn't easy to change at all. It's, it takes a real stretch because people just don't change overnight. It doesn't matter how good your copy is, it just takes time for people to think that their old way of thinking is kind of redundant. And that's why consistent messaging is key and that's why stories like this template are gonna be so powerful for your arsenal. But to give you an example of what some false beliefs might look like, let's go dive into an example from one of my clients, Colin. Now, I really like using Colin's avatar because they might actually be some former version of you of or you right now. I don't wanna overgeneralize because I still have a very small subscriber count, but Basically, so Colin's avatar, they didn't like selling on webinars. And guess what? We're trying to sell them a product on how to sell on webinars. Now, the false beliefs, the stories that they're telling themselves are this. And I've got my trusty YouTube planning device. Oh, it's called a phone. Selling is sleazy and pushy. They've been on too many bad webinars. It's left a taste of commission breath in their mouth. Number two is that they're so used to giving content to do anything but giveaway content is just gonna rob the audience of value. And number three, the classic one, webinars are dead, Facebook ad costs are through the roof, why even explore this in your business? Now, as you can see, we've got three different stories, three false beliefs, and I actually borrowed this theme from Russell Brunson, which is, you've got your internal beliefs, which is, I don't believe I can actually pull this thing off. You've got your external beliefs, external resources that people think that they can't get done, external things that are stopping someone from achieving that end result, like time or money. And then there's ultimately, does your thing actually work? Does it actually produce results? And with these three categories, you can pull out so many false beliefs. You can probably pull out about 30 and you've got 30 different ideas, but they generally come down towards you know three or four different categories for each one. Now, when it comes to writing broadcast emails or anything like that, you don't need to always have a client case study or testimonial, you can just use your own personal life, intertwine it with an internal, external, or a vehicle false belief, and then transition into your premise. But for the sake of Colin, I wanna go deeper into this example because there's a lot of hangups that people have, and this is just brilliant fodder that we can explain as an example. So one massive problem that his audience, his avatar had gone through is that they tried to sell on webinars before and were unsuccessful with it. They weren't able to make any money with it. So their objections are gonna be, webinars don't work. I'm not good at selling. I don't like selling. As you can see, there's a bunch of false beliefs, stories intertwined from past emotional baggage that's swirling around in their head and it might be holding them back from moving forward. Well, the good news is I'm gonna show you a proven example from this client's launch, $247,000. I'm gonna show you a real false belief style email template you can use. It's super simple, very short and I'm gonna give you the template in this next example. So this example is perfect. You have launches, email autoresponders, mini internal launches, that sort of thing. So last one, I'm gonna show you how to do the false belief email marketing template. 
I love doing this. This is exactly what I've used for heaps of different launches. They work brilliantly for launches because people have a lot of skepticism. That's the best way of putting it. Uh, and I'm going to show you an example from a 247K launch they did with Colin. Um, so let's jump into this email. Now, before I sort of set the scene a bit, I should probably do that. Um, people are afraid of selling. People don't like selling. They've had bad experiences, all these sort of things. And there's a lot of emotional baggage that people carry. So they might believe that your thing actually works, but then they might not believe that they themselves can get over the line to do it. So part of the psychology of writing a good false belief style case study email, it's not quite a case study email. You'll see what I mean in a second. It's just there to overcome objections and get them really excited for the next steps. Um, far out, I lost my train of thought. <laughs> um, but basically, so... This is a this is from the uh, this is from the post launch email. So when the cart is open for a few days, and we want to get them excited, but they're going to feel like, uh, you know, I'm not sure about sales. So let's get to the meat and potatoes of this email, where it's like, I want to introduce you to KT because she's always felt really uncomfortable when it comes to sales, and now she's one of the most our most successful students. Picture this: KT used to dump her photos in a prospect's lap, run away. Pray to God they turn to a client. That was her version of selling. KT always sold like this because deep down she always felt like, and this is the important part, I don't want to come off as pushy. I don't want them to feel like I just want their money. I don't want to just give some sleazy pitch. So I'm entering the conversation going on in the prospect's mind with these three things. That's why I've bolded it. That's why I've put asterisks next to it um, because I know this is what, exactly what they're thinking. Maybe these, some of these feelings, maybe some of these feelings about sales come up for you to name. If so, not to worry because inside the academy, I show you exactly how to get past these hangups around sales. So we're bringing up the problem. Maybe you're feeling the same way too. I'm giving you the template right here, by the way. Um, if so, not to worry. Inside blank, I show you exactly how to get past blank. It's how blank was able to achieve blank. <laughs> and if this is something you really want to get some handholding with, I highly recommend you check out Elite Upgrade on the enrollment page. So this was how we basically sold out his high ticket coaching within 48 hours on top of the do-it-yourself course. I'm taking out additional support and accountability from me personally, but time's running out for you to make a decision because so the door's closed for another six months, blah, 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 blah. Okay, but can you see it just like I said, the false belief? These are the false beliefs. She used to do this. Maybe you can relate. She did these three things. You know, maybe you can relate. And if you feel that way, that's okay because I show you how to get past these and it's how this person was able to get result. So that is the false belief style in marketing template. And uh, yeah, go and put it to good use. Don't just sit around actually go and do this. this is super powerful stuff. All right, so after today's video, I hope you can see that the ideas aren't very scarce. They're everywhere, basically. What's scarce is actually just people's ability to sit down, brainstorm, and just put your fingers to the keyboard. That's the hardest part. It's a resistance to just get started. Resistance is one of those things that we all face, and as soon as you get started, it gets a lot easier. Now, hopefully, I know you've got a bunch of ideas swirling around in your head. Maybe you just need a plan so it's easy to follow and you can just get moving quickly. Well, what if I told you I had an easy solution to help you do that, and you didn't have to pay anything for it either? What if there was a way you can get an email a day for the next 20-ish days so you can pump out months of content you don't get any idea droughts. What if someone gave you a prompt, planted an idea in your head, and you had to only spend the next 10 to 12 minutes writing out an email to match that idea? Not only that, what if I showed you what it took to be an influential writer with your emails? The kind of writing where people see your name, just the from name, and automatically open it inside their inbox because you're the one who's sending it. Well, if that interests you, I've created something called the Email Lifers Challenge. It's something I'll eventually charge for, but for now, it's totally free. And on the screen here, you'll see me scrolling after result, after result, after result with my clients where I've deployed this exact strategy inside of their email marketing. And so those secrets that have made $10 million plus in client results for my clients. Does that sound pretty cool? Well, to be completely frank with you, this is my shameless way of asking you to join my email list. So the email list life is challenge is perfect for you if I'm gonna get my phone out again because I'm all dramatic and stuff. You've got no idea what to say to turn a new subscriber into a buyer, whether that's a product or a high ticket call. How to write content that doesn't just sell people into your products and services, but also into your way of thinking. 
That way you can create email list lifers. And you wanna set yourself up for months of content, that way you never experience writer's block again. Bottom line, you wanna be swapped with ideas so you never go through an idea drought ever again. So if you wanna get free access to the email list lifers challenge, click on the link in the description below. But other than that, if you got some enjoyment out of it, you don't wanna sign up for the challenge, that's cool too. I've got heaps more content coming up. Make sure you hit the like button if you got some really good value out of this episode. My name is Jules Ann, see you around.